gonna start working on uh, modifying my uh, 521 uh, brake kit. That kit fits 320s, 520s, 521s, drum 620s. Uh, it allows uh, hard body hubs, rotors, and calipers to, uh, not hard body, 720 basically, hubs, rotors, calipers. Anyway, a lot of this information is uh, up on Ratson. Uh, but I figured I'd document it here for uh, the videos and stuff like that of the changes and, and things. So what I've done in the past here is this is a 720 hub, okay, a hard body hub. Actually, this, this centering nub here comes out to the middle of the uh, holes, basically, the mounting holes for the, for the brake rotor. Uh, and they can be used, but they don't fit the, uh, the center of the stock rims or most 14-inch rims. That, that center nub is... Uh, too big, uh, and so a lot of guys will just grind it down. I've I've ground them down with a uh, four-inch grinder before. I've put them on the lathe and and ground them down and cleaned them up too. So uh, either one will work. Now the 620 and 720 hubs, disc hubs, uh, will fit. Now dimensionally, the distance between the rotor mounting surface and the wheel mounting surface and the spacing on the spindle, all that's the same between them. Between the 620, 720, and hard body, are all the same. Uh, so you can interchange the hubs. Uh, the challenge is, like I said, the, the hub centric. That's why you kind of stay away from the uh, uh, after. Look it up on my site, uh, Blue Hands Inc. Um, under the brake kit, the uh, 85 and later, December 85 maybe, um, 720 and later in hard body. They have the big centering hub. So anyway. Uh, Enough on that. Now this is a 720 rotor, this is a hard body rotor. Uh, if you can see the difference here, if that comes into uh, focus there, let's see here. Uh, easier to show. The, you notice the, the boss, the top hat, is different here. Okay, so we'll be able to see that a little differently there if we flip that over. Uh, I took some pics, uh, pictures, they'll, uh, you know, there's about a quarter of an inch there, something like that. So what I'm looking to do is, with this rotor, okay, because it is closer to the wheel mounting surface, it pushes the whole caliper bracket and everything out further, okay, which cuts down the wheel clearance. So in order to run a stock rim, uh, you have to put a uh, 3 16 quarter inch wheel spacer in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the kit up and go back to... Now the kit's never had a hard body but my NL320 ran hard body. Uh, so I'll, that was the first one I did. And then I realized that, oh, I didn't have to work so hard <laughs> with the bearing adapters and everything to get this to work because I could use the 720. Um, but in in the doing it there, uh, anyway, long story, I found out that I couldn't run stock rims and that stuff after the fact. I was using old parts when I did the prototyping. So I'm going to use this one. Basically, that pushes everything back at least a quarter inch uh, which means that you don't need the quarter inch wheel spacer anymore. Okay, so the 720 is uh, going to be out of the uh, out of the picture there. What I what I need to do is I need to mount uh, mount up the rotor to the hub. Um, I'm just going to use three bolts. That's uh, really all it needs. Actually, before I do that, though, I need to throw uh, three lugs back in here because uh, I know I'm going to be trying to mount up a rim. Uh, in mock-up to uh, make sure that everything clears. All right, I've done other videos before of putting the, the studs in. We're just going to do it real quick. Drop it in. Give it a little twist there to make sure the knurls line up. Okay, get it fairly flat on that. Just tap it back in. I'm about to lose a control arm off the bench. Okay, and I'm going to mount them, three of them, so I'm going to mount them uh, in a triangle. Thumb out of the way there. If I was, if this was final installation, these these are coming back out. Of, um, if it was final installation, I would put them in with the press probably, because hammering them in sometimes you don't get them perfectly uh, straight up and down. So lugs are back in. Let's uh, throw three bolts in. So when you go to the scrapyard and pull the hubs, make sure you save these bolts and take them with the hub. Uh, if you don't, you're kind of screwing yourself. Um, the 
they don't have to be down hard or torqued or anything like that. So now we're set up. Now we can uh, put it up on the spindle. So uh, we don't have to worry about the seal or anything like that because this is all just test fitting in that. Now uh, on here is, uh, this is a test version of my inner bearing adapter. And I also have uh, another one out here. This one's locked on solid. This one I uh, made a slip fit so I could uh, play with it. But uh, this is a hard body inner bearing uh, or 720, 620 drum. They all use the same bearings or 620 disc rather. They all use the same bearings. Um, and that thickness there is pretty darn close to the stock uh, spacer. So uh, anyway, we'll put, this, put this up here. Throw the those bearing adapters uh, make it to where the the bearings that came with the hub uh, fit. So everything's dry. Don't have to crank it down tight or anything like that. Don't need lube in there. Okay. So what we're looking at here is this space. Okay. The challenge being, let me see if I got my bar handy here. Maybe. Nope. That's half inch. Uh, so much for being prepared. Uh, anyway, this is uh, this is roughly three eighths inch plate. <clears throat> it's just aluminum. It might be a little on the thin side, but as you can see here, we can't get a three eighths inch plate in there. Okay. And what I did on the NL320 was I made that adapter push the whole thing out okay the problem with that was is that I don't know if you can see that hole there uh, that's the perfect depth right there you know that's that's in where it needs to be cotter pin will go in just fine so what happens is when I pull the whole hub out to get that space on the back to fit a 3 8 inch bracket um, we lose uh, a lot of that hole and I had trouble getting the getting the uh, cotter pin in there had to use like half of it or something like that I don't remember but uh, um, now custom machining could be done to the hub and I could cut the shelves back in uh, on the front here to let that bearing go in further and that would gain this space back I wouldn't want to do it on the back because that would just make the whole hub and everything recess more uh, counterproductive to uh, what we're trying to do here um, so the plan is to go back to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the doorman nut out that's shorter and see uh, how much room we have. Oh, so, yeah, I've got it uh, off-centered a bit because every time I seem to put the camera focus like right there where I want it, uh, it reads off the background. So anyway, this is the new doorman nut. Okay, this should, maybe, might be a little bright. Anyway, it's a 615-065. Uh, it's a 3 quarter by 20 by 1 and 1 16 hex axle spindle nut. Uh, you can get them at most uh, parts stores. So what I've done here is I've put it on uh, enough that I got the cotter pin in. Okay. Um, if we back it off one more turn, uh, I got to kind of work it in there. Two turns or two slots rather. Too much. Okay. So I want to be able to just drop that in there uh, and have a little bit of play there. Okay. Um, in fact, for testing purposes, I think we're going to go one more in just to be, just to buy ourselves some room there. Okay, so what this does is this allows the hub to come out. Okay, so we're going to push the hub out now and see if we can uh, fit the three ace plate in there. Okay, so pull it out. Oh man, just goes in. Uh, and this plate is just a hair over three ace, uh, a few thousandths. This is. This is the same 3 8 inch plate. I need to get a piece of hot rolled. It looks like there's 10, 15 thousandths of clearance there, which actually would uh, would actually do the trick. And if I pull that cotter out and uh, go out that one more little bit, yeah, pick up a hair more. Um, considering the 3 8 really won't flex, uh, I feel pretty... Uh, pretty confident that ought to work so I'll pursue that so what I need to do is I need to take measurements of how much more I need that to push out and then what I'll do is uh, I'll redesign the bearing spacer to push it out that much okay um, I've got another option here for testing that I'll probably use uh, here real quick so let's uh, check that so do, 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 do. okay I don't remember what the hell I was doing here 
Okay, this spacer is one I made um, to push the 620 uh, drum bearing out as a suitable replacement for the 521 drum bearing, which is non-existent. So since this has a cone in the back, just like the uh, regular bearing and stuff like that, this basically is going to give me roughly about a two millimeter push out. It looks like it's going to push it out a little more than that because uh, this uh, taper doesn't open up as uh, far as uh, the normal one, so it's catching right there. I can uh, adjust that later. So this basically pushes it out too much. Let's uh, let's see whether or not we can get the cotter back in. That's uh, that's the only real issue with it pushing it out too much. Okay, so put the short nut back on. Let it uh, seat in a little bit there. Oh, back in, no. Um, see that we're missing, uh, missing about half the hole there. So that's pushing it out too far. Okay, I can't, I could get half the cotter in. I can't get the whole thing in. So um, I'm going to need to find a different spacer, uh, but I can measure the two and find out uh, just how far that is off. So I kind of cheated a little bit. My lathe is set up for tubing notching, and I didn't feel like uh, just to break this edge down a bit to get a little more clearance. I didn't feel like uh, uh, resetting it up. So uh, I put it on my belt grinder over the uh, one of the bearings and knocked it off in about 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay, so with the adapter there, I'm now down pushed up hard against it. So I have a hard measurement. I can tell exactly how thick that uh, spacer is, that washer. And so if it's too much now, I have a place to go and I can uh, check from there. So let's uh, let's mount it up, see if it's... Uh, how it so this is where we're sitting here. Um, uh, I have the spacer in there, which is ballpark of two millimeters. Um, sixteenth of an inch, something like that. I'd have to measure it. Anyway, uh, the uh, three-eighths inch plate just goes in there, just barely clears. Uh, you know, there's a 30 seconds, 15, 20 thousandths, something like that, like I said before. Challenge is, is that uh, even with the shorter castellated nut, the Dorman, um, I cannot get it in the hole. And the, if I back off even uh, one there, so I could probably put a thinner, smaller cotter pin in. Um, not sure quite how comfortable I am with that idea. Um, and here's the thing too, is that then I have to recalculate the dimensions on the bearing spacer. I also have to recalculate the spacers on the, uh, uh, for the ears that hold between the arm and the ears or the, uh, the main plate and the ears for the, uh, brake kit. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with the 720 stuff, uh, like I have been, the 720 rotor, um, that makes a whole lot more space and everything like that. Still get to use the stock nut and all that kind of stuff. Um, the difference being is you have to run a wheel spacer to run stock rims. A lot of guys out there buy this kit because it fits 14 inch rims, uh, even though they're not running stock rims. So the only guys that would have to run a wheel spacer are the guys running, uh, uh, stock rims and once the brake pads get worn down halfway you don't even need the wheel spacer so uh, uh, I think that's basically where I'm gonna end up uh, what I'm gonna end up doing with it this time and uh, that way I can move forward submit the order for the parts and that stuff and uh, get the kits going well what I was playing with here I've still got the spacer in the back side there I grabbed the next size smaller uh, cotter pin diameter wise okay and with with this uh, crank down that goes in easily okay uh, and actually if I back it off to the next one over here because there's two sets of holes in there 90 degrees apart so you don't have to back off 90 uh, that uh, I just went in here there we go had it hooked on the nut uh, it goes in there and actually if I had to back it off even that much farther uh, it uh, still goes in there. So here's the thing, that takes care of the bearing problem, okay? That uh, cotter pin should still hold in there. If anybody's got more feedback that that would not work, 
Uh, I mean, in a catastrophic failure, you got bigger things to worry about. Basically, the bearing would have to freeze and lock up and rip the tab off of this washer uh, in order for the nut to even spin, okay? That washer's locked. There's no way that washer's going to turn. So it really doesn't take much. This is a safety thing because this nut's not uh, torqued down too tight. Um, it's just to keep it from, you know, walking away. You know, if this thing heats and contracts and that kind of stuff uh, and ends up with this being loose, then this keeps it from, from walking away. Uh, and that cotter pin's enough to do that. Anyway, so what we're looking at here is that takes care of that. So I could, I could literally have the bearing adapters made the same and just put that spacer behind there. Um, then the hard body caliper, hard body rotor could be used or the 720 rotor could be used. The difference being is in the bracket and, and it would still take basically two different brackets. Uh, and I'm not sure I'm willing to do that. Uh, so I'll have to mull that over just a bit too and uh, and see, but I could actually uh, proceed with the uh, with getting the spacers made. Um, hmm. I guess I'll have to mock it up with a caliper bracket and see what I think. So I put the uh, this is actually men's bracket, powder coated lime green. <laughs> uh, so I do have a brake bracket to throw on here. So let's uh, let's throw that on and then see how much space we have. Ooh! Um, let's back this out a little bit. And it looks like the camera's lined up okay. You can see how much uh, space is there. Not a, uh, not a great deal. Um, so I'm not sure I'm too big of a fan of that. I could come out a few thousands more. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, I've got a little bit of play using that other cotter pin. Um, so, let's see, that one, uh, that one goes in there, but it drags, okay. And that's uh, 26 thousandths. So, since the 3 ace plate won't really flex, um, ah, I can't. Oh, I can't push it over enough, that's for sure. Ouch. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. And then once you actually bolt the caliper bracket to it here, it uh, becomes even more rigid. Um, but, yeah, see, there's not enough room here. So let's change the angle here a little bit. Oh, the battery's about dead anyway. Okay, so I would have to... This would have to go about here to be centered, so as you can see, i got to move that back a good 3 sixteenths of an inch, which means these spacers have to be taller, uh, which isn't really an issue, but then that's two different brackets I have to make. Um, all the same pieces, just the standoffs would be different. Um, I'd end up having to weld them to order, which I don't really want to do, because if I'm going to get them plated, i got to turn them all in at one time to get them plated. So, And I don't really want to have, you know, make 10 kits and have five... Uh, with this rotor set up and everything for stock rims and you know then the rest set up the other way for uh, non-stock rims um, it would be far better and easier to just make the wheel spacers available so I'm gonna grab a stock rim and I'm gonna play with a uh, set it back up with the 720 stuff and uh, check clearance and see whether or not I need a quarter inch 3 16 or what so I think that'll be next. Quick shot for comparison. You can see how much more space is in here with the 720 uh, rotor on. I took the spacer out, the uh, so it's just the original, uh, my original uh, bearing adapter, okay? Stock uh, nut is back on the end. There's plenty of room for the cotter pin and that stuff. So uh, really a sweet setup. So I'm gonna mount up the uh, caliper and uh, go grab a rim. All right, trying to show, uh, this is a stock rim on the 720 setup and you can see that it's just barely, it's hitting there, and that's about the only spot. So you could, you could uh, grind that, you know, point of the rim right down there. Uh, you could grind that down a little bit, not have to run the wheel spacers. Um, or you could also grind the spot on the uh, 
caliper where it's hitting. Let's uh, flip around to the other side and look at that. All right, you can see the uh, the scrub line there. Okay, heaviest down here. Um, so guys have taken and ground off some of this. Okay, uh, I'm not saying yeah you're to do that. <laughs> uh, if you do it, it's completely at your own risk. Um, would I personally do it? Mm, I'd, maybe. I'd probably run the wheel spacer. I'm not sure. Uh, well, if we come over to the wheel here, you can see that... Give it a second to focus in there. You can see that bright spot right in the middle there. Okay, that's where it was uh, rubbing. Okay, and it's the way Dotson designed these wheels. I've posted all this before, uh, but sometimes it's easier just to add the information to the new stuff than to uh, go try to dig it all back out. But it's the way they have this... Uh, the boss and the rim here stamped in. Uh, it's not cut out, it's uh, stamped in and so it interferes with the uh, brake caliper. So let's throw a uh, eighth inch spacer on. I think that's all I've got. Let's see if it clears. A quick comparison between the wheel spacers. This one is uh, roughly a quarter inch, three sixteenths. I'm not quite sure. I haven't measured it. It's made in China. It's cast aluminum. I would not personally run these. Uh, the chances of them cracking, splitting, uh, distorting, uh, compressing basically Ah, I just uh, heard too many war stories of these things cracking and breaking and falling out and then your rim is so darn loose on there your lug nuts can uh, walk off. So anyway, you see all the all the slap there. Now for, for what I'm doing to be able to tell whether I need a quarter inch or not, it's fine for that. Would I actually run it on a vehicle on the road? No. Uh, here's the laser cut ones. You can see these are the ones I had done. Um, in fact, you, you, they're kind of, if you don't get them on just uh, straight on the... Uh, I had a little trouble. Anyway, uh, this is an eighth of an inch. Let's stick the uh, wheel on here and see what we uh, see what we get. Two lug nuts out of. Oops, put the lug nut on right. Okay. And that's that's all the dry bearings and everything like that. But we're not getting any uh, scrubbing around the backside. All right. Um, it looks like there is uh, plenty of room in there. Now, because their stampings are a little bit irregular, okay, see how close that one comes, okay? Down here at a different angle, there's still at least a sixteenth of an inch, but that one's pretty tight. I'd be willing to bet that's, yeah, that's the one with the shiny mark, okay? Uh, but when you come around, that one's got a little bit more room. Um, and that one's got a lot of room. Uh, you know, quite honestly, you could probably smack that bump down with a hammer instead of grinding it. Uh, anyway, we have clearance all the way around. Uh, it would require only a very tiny bit of uh, grinding on the rim or the caliper, and I could live with that. Let's, uh, while I'm at it, let's take a quick peek here. Oh, look, we've got plenty of thread engagement. Um, Plenty of uh, engagement there. Um, let's see if I've got a metric lug nut handy here. Okay, it's not sticking out the end. Uh, I posted once before, I don't remember exactly what it is, how many threads. That would qualify for how many threads. Uh, so this is your call on a point of comfort level. If you want the stud sticking out the end, then you're going to want to put longer uh, lugs on to run stock rims. Um, I wouldn't have any problem running that myself personally, uh, but as I said, that's that's your call. You know, if you put one of these other kind of lugs on, you would have looked at that and said, "Oh, there's plenty of engagement," and not even uh, not even really thought twice about that. Because keep in mind too, it's not just to the outer edge there; that cone goes down in. Okay. You know, so we're actually getting we're actually getting engagement down into here. So there's at least a half inch of engagement. Uh, so eighth inch spacers that'll make it a little cheaper for me to have made uh, a little easier for the end user. That way, the because the quarter inch is going to push it out enough that uh, I would put longer studs on, uh, and other guys have so 720 parts eighth inch spacer. I think that's the setup we're going to go with here um, for stock rims. I like that. Uh, 
and if and if the rim does rub, you know, a little bump with a hammer, a little uh, touch with a grinder, uh, I don't think is going to uh, cause any grief whatsoever. All right, as long as we're here, I threw the quarter inch in. Um, you can see we don't quite have as much there. Uh, yeah, see, I would not, uh, I would not uh, run that myself personally. Yeah, not at all. Uh, the other way I didn't mind, um, that wasn't too bad. Uh, definitely, you definitely want to get longer uh, lug bolts if you're going to run a quarter inch spacer. Um, let's see if we can move this without uh, getting too bumpy. And let's, as long as we're here, um, let's come back over just a little bit. There we go. Okay, yeah, I see tons of room now. Where's the one with the mark on it? Oh, not that one. That one, okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of room in there. Not particularly needed. Um, so, yeah, eighth inch spacer. I like that, that's, uh, that's a nice happy uh, middle ground there.